Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be continuing on with our Final Fantasy uh, 3D modelled characters. So I've painted Cloud Strife on the channel previously and in this video we're going to take on Tiffa Lockhart with this amazing 3D print that we've got here. So this is one of the uh, the other sort of big main characters from the uh, Final Fantasy 7 game and we're going to start off as always by painting the skin. So I'm going to do a tried and tested skin tone here so we're just going to start off with the beige red from Vallejo and we're just going to give this one or two really nice sort of thin layers just across the skin so we're going to paint this around the face the neck uh, around the hands and the arms and of course the legs as well so with these particular models I'm trying to keep these as true to the sort of original character source as possible we're going to paint these using the old-fashioned sort of uh, 1990s color scheme um, so these characters are going to try to uh, hold on to and keep to quite a lot of the nostalgia and the old-fashioned kind of uh, style. So once we've done the base parts of the skin, we're then going to use a nice dark burnt red colour to do the shoes and the gloves as well. And also there's a small area just around her hair uh, that is also holding her hair together that is a, uh, a nice sort of red tone as well. So we're going to paint that using the same uh, colour. So we're just going to try to be as careful as possible not to get this on the skin when we paint it. And as you can see with the arms, I've painted the top part of the arms around the shoulders, but left the forearms alone because the forearms we're going to do uh, into a black colour and a black tone, uh, just again sort of sticking with the original sort of colour tone. So we're going to paint around the gloves here, just trying to be very, very careful. As you can see, she's wearing some fingerless gloves on the left hand, uh, on both hands actually, so we're just going to paint the red around the gloves, uh, but not get this on the skin as well. Then I'm going to use a tenebrous grey, or alternatively you could use black if you'd prefer. Uh, they do pretty much the same sort of thing. I just like using this colour because it takes to the miniature in such a, a nice even tone. Uh, so if you don't have this colour, this is definitely one that is worth uh, putting into your painting arsenal. And that's all I'm going to do now is paint around all of the areas that we want to be black. So we're going to paint around her hair. We're going to paint around these forearm areas here, as you can see. Uh, we're going to paint around the skirt. And we're also going to paint around the socks and also uh, just the area across the bottom of the boots as well. So the tread across the bottom of the boots, we're going to do the same. From there, then, we're also going to paint uh, the top using ghost grey. So we're going to use this really nice light sort of white colour grey just around her top. So I'm just going to try to be careful, again, not to get this on the skin, but we're just going to tidy up all of that area where the skin is around the neck and just around the body here as well, as you can see. Just trying to be very careful using the very tip of the brush and, again, being careful when we've got to get just inside here uh, around the side of the top and trying not to get this too much uh, on any of the areas that we've painted previously. So these are some of the characters that we've been painting up. Um, like I said, I started with the Cloud Strife as well. And this is a full set of amazing, amazing 3D prints that a friend of mine gave me. And we're going to paint all of these up to try to be so, so nostalgic. Um, but it's also going to be cool because it should try to give us a few different things that we can try as well. A few techniques that maybe we don't normally try. Um, and a few different colours and colour themes and things like that as well. So I'm using now here just one of my more favorite colors on the channel using a Dark Rust 302 and this is a really nice dark brown color. As I normally say this is perfect for building browns up in different ways so you can use this as a great great base tone and then you can build up different colors and that's all I'm doing with this is I'm just painting this around all of the uh, sort of leather straps and all around the belt area just like so. Once all of that is uh, dry, I'm then going to use an ash grey. And using this ash grey, I'm just going to paint the metal parts. So there's a, 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 a sh um, an elbow guard here, um, and also some metal parts just across the gloves. As you can see, there's just a few little bits of metal just across the gloves here, almost uh, sort of like uh, protectors or knuckle dusters or things like that, because Tiffer is a fighter. Tiffer is a close combat sort of... Um, She's a fighter. She likes using her hands a lot and she fights quite a lot with her martial arts and things like that. She's a very, very cool character if you didn't already know. 
So that's all we're going to do is base them using this ash grey. So basing them using this really dark grey colour. And then we're going to build those up into a more non-metallic metal colour tone later. Now as you can see, uh, once you've done all of the base colours, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. All I've added to this is using the ghost grey, I've painted the whites of the eyes as well. So she does look a little bit crazy at the moment. <laughs> So once we've done that, we're going to use a couple of different washes and we're going to start off with the flash wash. And with the flash wash, we are just going to paint this just across all of the flesh. So I've added a very small drop of water to this wash just so that it manipulates and moves onto the miniature in a nice, uh, smooth, even fashion. And it allows me to manipulate and move this around the model uh, quite easily and quite nicely. It also uh, avoids it pooling too strongly in certain areas as well, uh, because if it's just a little bit thinner, it's not going to pool down and create big, big blobs of shade and, and, and things like that in areas that you don't want it to be so I'm just gently trying to make sure that I paint this on the skin but then also making sure that I don't paint this on things like the white of her top and of course across the red as well it's just trying to make sure that this is only for the skin areas and as I say we're just going to manipulate this just to make sure that this is nice and even across the model which will give us then an idea as to where we can build the skin tones back up from once that's dry, we're going to use Strong Tone as well. This is, again, one of my favourites. Strong Tone is a really good dark, dark sort of brown uh, colour wash. Um, this really does tie colours together. Um, it's one of my favourites, as I say. I really like this colour. So we're going to paint this one across all of the red areas, um, just like so. So across the boots and across the gloves. And we're going to try to point this, uh, paint this just a little bit across the... Um, across the leather straps as well but we are going to be very very careful when we do that because some of those leather straps are going around the white area of the top as well so we don't want to get the, the brown across the white and things like that i'm going to try to be as careful as possible uh, with this once that one is dry we're going to use uh, a, something that i haven't used for a while on the channel which is a pale gray wash and this is a Vallejo wash. So this gives you a grey sort of tone, uh, but without making the model dark. So this adds like a little bit of a, a grey blue tone into the model as well. Uh, so really good shade because it does shade, shade down light colours like greys and whites, uh, but without taking that vibrancy out, which is fantastic. So we're only going to use that just across uh, the top. Now, once all of the washes are dry, we're then going to go back in and build up those colours like we normally do. And uh, as always, we're just going to start by going back through with the skin tones. So we're going to start with the beige red again, and then we're going to start to pick out all of those details. The cool thing now is, whereas the shade has dried, you can kind of see where uh, the, the shade has dried into those uh, detailed recess points, which gives us the opportunity now to build the colour and to build the highlights all up and around the lighter tones and the raised areas on the face just like so you can see that I'm picking out the cheeks the nose around the chin I'm gonna do the same thing across the legs and of course across the abdomen uh, the shoulders you can see where the shade is sort of dried which gives us the perfect opportunity to build then the lighter colors and the lighter tones back up just by using the tip of our brush like so it's such a simple way of painting skin, uh, but it's so, so effective. It looks really, really great when it's done. Um, skin is one of those things, as I've said multiple times on the channel, it's one of those things that is often can be quite daunting and quite scary uh, before you start. Um, and then the more you paint and the more you get used to it, the easier it becomes and the more fun it becomes as well. It's one of those things where you can worry about painting to begin with. And then once you get a technique down, it becomes so much easier that you kind of enjoy painting a lot, lot more. So once that one is dry, we're going to use the beige red and the basic skin tone. And I'm going to do what I normally do on the channel, which is just add in half and half. So that's just one blob of each, uh, like a nice 50-50 ratio. So nice and even makes it very, very simple and very easy to sort of paint in this way. Um, you don't have to be an expert on mixing. You don't need to mix multiple, you know, one tenth of a part or anything like that. Just paint in that one step up, that sort of half stop. So we're doing uh, the base color, then the half stop highlight, then the highlight makes it very very quick very very easy very very simple but it also looks good as well which is ideally something that we want to to try to achieve is great looking results but without spending half of our life painting just one model <laughs> 
So yeah, there we go, just painting across the shoulders as you can see, and around the face, and then doing the same thing just around uh, the knees and around the legs and things like that. Now with these highlight layers, as I tend to say, you can, if you want, use the brush strokes to, to leave some of the darker color just underneath, and that will give the illusion of um, sort of muscle tone, texture, definition of the model and things like that as well. So it's very, very simple to use the, the highlight to kind of create those textures that you want as well. Um, it's part of the fun of painting skin is to allow all of these little sort of different colors and different highlights and different shades to show through to create the overall texture that you want. Once that's dry then, as I say, we've done the base, we've done the half stop, now we're going to do the full stop, we're just going to use the basic skin tone on its own, and this time we're going to be a little bit more careful where we place it, and we're going to start to pick out all of the areas where we think the light is catching on, uh, on the model, so just around the nose, the cheeks, just around the forehead, and of course around the fingers, the shoulders, or across the knees, things like that, where we think the light is going to pick uh, on the model, and where we think the highlighting needs to be to pick out and bring up some of that highlights and some of those colours. Just like so, you can see I'm just picking out some of the bits on the, the top end of the fingers, but we're not going to do the underneath of the fingers because we kind of want that to simulate the shade. So again, using the same techniques, just dragging the tip of the brush just across uh, the, uh, the legs here and using the brush strokes to create that texture and that tone and definition in the muscle tone, as you can see. And I'm only going so far with this one because we want the highlight to be on the top area, but not on the back area. We kind of want it to highlight in a nice, uh, nice smooth fashion. So once all of the skin is done, we're going to move on and then pick out some of the reds. We're going to go to a carmine red. Carmine red is a really nice sort of lighter tone red, but it's also nice and thin. This doesn't uh, go onto the miniature and sort of take over the miniature. This has a really nice sort of starting uh, sort of tone. So this is how we're going to start to build up that vibrancy. And we're going to start to build up that red color tone, as you can see. Now we're going to be a little bit more specific about where we place this. Again, very similarly to what I was just saying with the legs. We're going to place this across the top area of the hands and around areas of the boots and of course the uh, the hair bobble or the, the hair tie. Uh, we're going to pick out areas where we think the light is going to be shining on it rather than just painting the whole of the area of the miniature. So as you can see I'm just picking out the top parts of the gloves here and of course just the top parts of the boots and things like that where I want the light to be shining and where I want the vibrancy to be. So just being careful to paint this across the top. Now, once that's done, we're going to use a coat of pure red from the Army Painter. Having a real bit of fun with this one, mixing loads and loads of different paints and different colours together. And it's really starting to get this one to stand out. Look at that vibrancy that we're getting out of this pure red now. And again, we're focusing this just across the very top of the gloves, just like so. And you can really see that it's starting to boost that vibrancy and build that character through the colour. So just paint it across the top, just around the top area here, using a dabbing and stippling motion and a few little brush strokes as well, just to kind of create that texture um, through the, the painting, creating that texture through through the, uh, the brush strokes, which is all part of the fun. Doing the same thing then, just across the boots, where, where we want the light to be, where we want the vibrance to be, just across the front area of the boots here. You can really see this pure red starting to... Um, Start to really, really pop, start to bring the real reds out of the model. And then for one of the final stages on the gloves, we're going to use one of my favourites, one of the channel's all-time favourites, Bloody Red. Again, as I say, it's a great name paint, but it also has a really good vibrance to it as well. And this time we're carefully just going to stipple this across certain areas of the gloves, the hair tie, the boots, and again, just stick into the top look just so that we gain that vibrance and that lightness across the top area, while underneath then stays a little bit darker as well. Just like so. Nice and simple but what a great way to build that vibrancy of the, the reds and you can really see the reds are starting to create a lot of character for this character. So this particular character, because she has quite a lot of black on the character, it's nice to have these areas where you've got this vibrant colour tone of red um, or building up the vibrancy of the leathers um, and also giving her a nice light skin tone because it creates a really interesting contrast between those light and dark areas and it breaks the model up from being just all one sort of dark color. Now, although a lot of the area is um, 
black on this particular model what we're going to do is we're going to use a thin coat of german gray and this german gray is a uh, a dark gray color but with a very very subtle hint of blue and the reason we're doing this again is just to break up all of the black areas although it's supposed to be black we don't want everything to just be dulled down to a matte black color we kind of want to give a few brush strokes through the hair like so just so that it builds a little bit more character a little bit more color and it gives your eyes something more to see this will create a more subtle looking black so that not everything then is toned down into one sort of tone and the good thing with that is when the model is finished and when it's on your display cabinet um, all of those little subtle bits like this will make it a lot more pleasing on the eye it will make the model look a lot more um, natural rather than just being a flat color um, and that's kind of what we're looking for we want a little bit more natural sort of color tone and definition through this particular one so as you can see, I'm just going around the hair. And once I'm done with the hair, I'm doing the same thing using the very tip of the brush, just to paint around the folds and creases in the skirt, just like so. So we're trying to paint the raised areas, as you can see. Um, it's kind of hard to see the paint going on with this one because everything is so dark. But don't worry, it's just picking out all of those raised points, just like so. And that's giving us, as I say, a little bit more of a natural point to look at on the model. Once that's done then we're going back to our ghost grey and we're just going to start to pick out uh, some of the creases and folds across the top that we've got here and this again now is just adding to build in the vibrancy of that light white grey tone as well. So again using the same idea and the same technique we're just going to use the tip of the brush to paint across areas where we think the light is catching. So as you can see just across the centre area I'm painting thin brush strokes just so that it creates the illusion that there are folds and creases across uh, the, the sort of uh, fabric of the top as well which is really really cool very very simple technique very easy to do but it looks great and it really does ha add a sort of finished touch to the model as well so as you can see just building that up and again as i said earlier just trying to be as careful as possible building some of that color up as well just around the side and back area so once all of that is done, now we're going to use a graphite colour. Now we're going to start to build these metals up using a non-metallic metal because I've done the same thing with our cloud. So we're going to do a very similar sort of thing with this one. And that's all we're going to do is using a stippling effect. We're going to slowly build uh, some of these colours and some of the vibrances up of the greys until they look um, very similar or until they have a cool sort of uh, non-metallic look. So as you can see, I'm using a stippling effect and I'm just adding grey uh, this sort of uh, grey tone around the elbow area just picking out those sort of uh, bobbles and things like that across the area but also picking out around the edges and that's going to add and build to this vibrancy so we're going to go with a graphite and silver grey mixed combination again we're going to use half and half so just combining half of each and again using that stippling effect you can see I'm just dabbing the very tip of the brush across an area where we want the, the, the light to be shining. And there we go, as you can see, just across the edge here. And just picking out those little baubles, just like so. Nice and simple, we're not going too extreme. We're making this nice and easy, nice and quick. Then we're gonna use silver gray on its own. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna very, very gently use a stippling effect to build up where we want the light to be. And we're gonna control where we want this to be. Add in some little stippling points and some little um, areas across the edges. So with the lighter tones, we're just going to drag this across uh, just like so. Just across the very edges of the gloves here, just across the metal point of this sort of knuckle duster type thing. And I'm just going to try to drag the side of the brush along so this creates that sheen, that kind of glow, that highlight that you'd get out of a sort of metal kind of effect or metal kind of colour. And again, same thing, just using the baubles, just picking those out, picking the top area of the baubles, leaving the underneath ones darker. So again, that creates the illusion of catching light. And then finally, we're just going to use a very small amount of white. Now for this, I'm using an AK interactive white, but you can use any other white if you want. A good one for this would be rotten white. And as you can see, I'm just using the very edge of the brush now to pick out the edges as much as I can and also add sometimes just a little scratch or scrape here and there and this is what creates that illusion of a real highlighted lighter stage and there you go once you've got the darker area underneath on the elbow pad and the lighter area just popping out where it's catching the light you can really see that sort of non-metallic sheen or shine catching through and that creates the illusion in such a cool little way 
So once we're done with that, we're then gonna do the leather brown. So we're gonna use leather brown just to build the leathers back up. Uh, this particular character normally would have sort of black leathers on the character rather than browns but as i said earlier i'm just going to mix this up slightly just so that it creates a little bit more of a pleasing sort of looking character uh, because i didn't want all of the model to be black and then have to just work with loads and loads of shades of gray i wanted to kind of mix things about a bit and kind of add a few different colors and tones so that it, it pops on the model and really mix uh, yeah you know really catches your eye in different ways then once we've done the leather brown we're just going to use deep brown and again same sort of thing as what we've done with the non-metallic metals we're just going to try to pick this out using the very tip of the brush with a sort of small stippling effect this time as you can see i'm just catching the very top area of the leathers and you can really see already that vibrance and that color really sort of sort of bursting through that darker darker brown underneath and that's already creating that character is creating a focal point and giving us something else to look at on the model instead of just loads and loads and loads of black and this is really going to allow her to stand out so just being very very careful especially around the top and skin area where she has these sort of um, straps just going up and across the body and there you go so once that's done, then we're gonna use a mahogany brown. This is a really nice sort of red tone brown. And as all I'm gonna do with this one is just try to dab a little dot in each one of the eyes because uh, looking at all of the different source material, Tiffa has these sort of reddy brown eyes. So we're just gonna use this mahogany brown to build up the color of the eyes before we put a small black blob into the eyes as well. Eyes are normally difficult to paint anyway, um, but they are also exceedingly difficult to catch painting on camera so i tried to paint them on camera as much as i could uh, but it is also quite complicated to catch so yeah using that mahogany brown first and then just trying to catch a very small dot of black just there and that is going to create this brown sort of color but then also give us the black sort of dot for the eye as well and that should give us and create the character that we're looking for and there we go that's all that's left is to just add a few colors to the base um, and that's Tiffa all done so this is the second one that I've done for the Final Fantasy 7 series she's a great great character with some really really cool points and cool techniques to try she looks fantastic um, and she's a really really interesting character those reds really pop I love them you'll have to let me know in the comment section below what you think if you enjoyed this video if you thought this was a cool one um, if you're a fan of the Final Fantasy characters which one would you like to see me paint next um, and so yeah I'd love to hear what you think of this one and what you think of how I've managed to paint her looking like the old original character um, and let me know what you would do differently as always my friends thank you so much for tuning in and watching and for all of your support I very much appreciate every single one of you thank you my friends and please take care